Hey everybody, welcome back to my 3D Studio Max series for beginners. Okay, so today what we're going to be doing is going over the material editor in 3D's Max. Uh, this is actually a beast of its own, and I'm only going to be able to show you the beginner parts of it. Uh, if you want to go more into it, I know people actually make a living simply off the material editor. There's a special team that works on just the materials to make these things look amazing. And like I said, it's a beast of its own, so I'm only going to be able to I'm only going to be able to show you the uh, the basics, which I mean it's enough for you to really do your own projects. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's open up the material editor right here by going up to this icon and clicking. Or what we can do is press the M key. It does the same thing. M key is usually uh, what I do to open this up. Okay, so let me move my keyboard really quick. Okay, so um, if yours does not look like this, this is the compact material editor. You, yours might look like this, the slate material editor. I don't like to use this one. I don't know. I'm just not used to it. I don't have much experience in this, in this kind of look here. So I usually go over to compact and yeah, I like using this one. Okay. So there are a few things you need to know here. First off, this is kind of your preview. Um, you can edit multiple different materials. Okay, so if your scene has, let's say, five objects, what you can do is make one, two, three, four, five different materials. Um, so these are your preview windows of what each material looks like. Now, um, let's say you have more than five materials. Don't sweat it. Right click and you can go five by three so you can have even more materials. So this is like 15 right here. Or you can even go to 24 different uh, materials right there. Now, Max only gives you 24 uh, materials to actually make. Uh, but don't worry, you can actually make more than that. All you'd have to do is just uh, make a new material off scratch. And then you can always bring back other ones and such. And I'll show you that in a bit. I know it's a little confusing what I'm saying right now. But for now, let's just go to 3x2. All right, that's all you really need to know. So far, I know I just confused myself. Let me just clarify things. These are your preview windows of what your materials will look like uh, as you build them. And if by any chance you need to make more, what you can either do is right click, go to five by three, right click, go to six by four, or let's go back to three by two, or just, you know, click and drag right here in the middle of each of these uh, materials. And you can, you know, get around like that. So that's all you really need to know right now. Okay. So these are your preview windows, and what you can actually do is change the way each of these looks. So let's say I have a more of a flat uh, object that I'm working on. Come over here, and you can change the, as it says right there, sample type. Click and hold, and boom. It now looks like a cube, and you can see the material as it look what it, what it would look like on a cube. I'm sorry if my words are not coming out perfectly. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and highlight, um, you know, click and hold again and go over to cylinder and you get the same idea you know so me I usually just play around in the sphere everything works out in the sphere fine so okay let's go a little bit more in depth here uh, now that we're done with this little area and this little button here let's move down to the ambient diffuse and specular level okay normally you don't mess with spec level um, you only usually mess with the, like the diffuse and the ambient. Uh, let me just go ahead and make a sphere, for example, in my perspective view. Great. Now, before I dive into this, I know my ideas are just flying all over the place. By the way, I can already tell this is going to be a long video, so bear with me. You can easily change the color of your object. Like if we render, yes, it comes out as green. You can easily change the color of this by changing the wireframe. Okay. And like I said, that's not the right way to change the color of your objects. This is simply changing the wireframe. So if I select off of it, you can see the wireframe is an orange color. Um, this right here, using the material editor, is the correct way to change the color. <laughs> Let me go ahead and drag one of these materials, drag it onto our object. And now you can see, since this is gray, or yeah, gray, our object is gray and you can see that the wireframe is still orange if I render this render you'll see it comes out as gray alright so how do I change this what we're going to do is change the diffuse color let's go over to diffuse just click this little button there or color there 
and we can change it to whatever the heck we want. So me, let's say I want like a cyan color. Okay, and I'm going to bring this up the whiteness. I'm going to click OK, and you can see it changes in real time. So watch this. I can change the color to red, and it changes instantly. And that's how easy it really is to start changing the color of your objects. Let me go ahead and render this out. And, you know, yay, it's it's working. Me, what I like to do, I'm just really quick going to change the segments up just to make it smoother because, well, I don't know. Anyway, if I render that, you'll see it's cyan. Awesome. So that's the diffuse color. What we can actually do is unlock this right here and change the ambient color. And the ambient is usually uh, a darker version of the diffuse color. Click OK. And there we go. I mean, you may not be able to see much of a difference here. But just so you know, the ambient color is usually a darker version of the diffuse color. I mean, you don't really have to change that unless you're going to, you know, make a career out of this. And, well, there you go. Okay. The next thing you want to know is the specular, the specular level and the glossiness. I really don't use soft and too much. So spec level and glossiness. And the I don't really have the best way to explain this. So what I'm going to do is read a piece of text off of a website called 3D's Max, 3D Max hyphen tutorials.com. And it says, a material's glossiness or dullness depends on the size and intensity of its specular highlight. In the material editor, the glossiness spinner affects the size of the specular area, and the specular level spinner affects the intensity of the glossiness. Keep in mind, when the specular level is too high and the glossiness is too low, you can get harsh backlights on your surfaces. So that's the best way to explain the specular level and the glossiness, uh, the specular level spinner and glossiness spinner, okay? So let's go ahead and start changing these and see what it does. Keep an eye on the grid or this graph over here and also keep an eye on the preview. And what I'm going to do really quick is just double click this thumbnail and it'll bring me um, a preview a little bit bigger and what we can do is extend this bigger and there we go we just make it bigger and see what it looks like right next to what we're doing I'm gonna bring the specular level up and notice how it changes over here notice what the graph looks like and we bring the glossiness up and check that out I don't know if you've noticed but the glossier the object the smaller the shine so check out how I raise the gloss the shine gets smaller so keep an eye on that. Now let's go ahead and reduce the specular level and see exactly what that does. Oops, it's probably too much. Okay, so you see the glass, it doesn't show up as much. If I bring it like super high, you'll see it shows up a lot. Um, so I mean, just mess around with these kind of things, okay? All right. Great. So, I mean, that's, that's glossiness for you. And if I go ahead and render this out, You'll see it looks a little more glossy, okay, as compared to uh, if I had it regular without it. Okay, so that's really how you uh, change the glossiness of your object. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to the opacity spinner now. And I mean, if you've ever used Photoshop or any other program that has to do with uh, the opacity, it's it's really simple. It just tells you how visible the object is, so I can make it like a little bit see-through or not. Uh, you know, so if I had another object behind this, let me see if I can make another, let me make a box or something. Okay, and I'll move that box really quick. Let me minimize this. I move that box so it's kind of behind it. You can see through it. Let me rotate a little bit, take off the grid, and you can see right through that sphere. Okay, if I render it, there you go. That's all it is. That's the opacity, just like any other program. Okay, just shows you how how see-through that object is, I guess you could say, or how transparent the object is. All right, so this video came out to about 11 minutes long, and it's pretty long, and I'm going to cut it here. Um, in the next video, what we're going to do is cover maps, and maps is where all the fun is really is uh, in in 3D's Max, in the Material Editor. I'm not joking. This is where you actually get realism out of objects and things like that. Okay, so... I'm going to end the video here, and after the maps video, uh, I guess I'll be finished with the material editor. You guys are coming really close to the end of the series, by the way. So, go ahead, click the next video, and I'll see you soon.